Looking at the model data, to me, this winter is much different than what we've seen in the past, and here's why. There's a lot of cold air out there to mess with, right, to deal with across Canada. And I say mess with because these models, especially the European, when you look long range, they do not handle cold very well at all. So when we start to look at some of these longer range outlooks, I think we're going to start to see them cave toward more of a colder solution. We're already kind of seeing that here in the short term, which we're going to talk about heading into this weekend into next week. But I just think we're going to see some warmer weather across the south, clearly above average here into the deep south across Texas. That has been the norm so far this month into the late part of November. I don't see that changing. But look at this cold. These are below average temperatures. And the map that we're looking at, it's temperature anomalies. And notice how we're seeing that here across North America into Western Canada. A lot of chilly air to tap into to bring south. Now, I'll tell you, these temperature departures, this is the European control. It's usually pretty wild and all over the place. I'm, I'm seeing the warm, just like you, but I'm also going, now hold on a second. There is a lot of cold air to the north. This cold air starts to get really dense. These are departures from average in January. Listen, we're entering a phase where I think some of this cold could not only dump down into the eastern U.S., but we're starting to see signals that it could come into the west. Don't let this fool you when you see these way above average anomalies. Granted, it's going to be warm. Let me show you the difference, too. It's, it's in the snowpack. It's in the ice. Look at all the unfrozen lakes. We've looked at this map for the last several videos. This is the newest data from today. This was looking back a year ago today. Here's where we are today. Look how much more solid that snow is across the northern tier of the United States. Across Canada, notice all the yellows and the oranges on the lakes, unfrozen. If you're watching and you're in Minnesota, if you're in places like North Dakota, possibly even Montana, I'd be curious to know, Wisconsin, how much ice are you seeing on the, on the lakes there? Are they truly frozen over more this year than last year? Because if I were to look at this, I'd say, yeah, they are. And that tells me there's potential for this cold. Now, I think we're going to melt some of this snow, by the way. But with a better snowpack and a snowpack that's going to continue to build this week, that cold is not going to be as modified, maybe as it's been in the years past. And I'm going to let this roll out. This is the European from overnight. I want you to see something. Notice the snow that continues to get laid down here across Canada. And look, I think another cold blast is coming south as we head into the end of this week. And then behind this, watch this one. It might amplify a little more by next weekend. Now, the MJO phase right now is kind of moving into a light one or a two you're not in meteorology that just means it's kind of a warm phase for a lot of the east and maybe central u.s but there are signs that it's not going to be a strong influence it may actually flip back around to eight which is super favorable for cold so a lot of winter to go this is just kind of digging into a few details if you're new to the channel thanks to all of the subscribers you pushed me past forty thousand yesterday i couldn't believe it. i was like oh my gosh we're here <laughs> we started off with just a thousand it seemed like a short time ago. So thousands of you have subscribed just over the last couple of months. Thank you for that. Uh, if you're thinking about looking for a weather channel here on YouTube, I hope you'll come back and you will subscribe. And to all the OGs, welcome back. I see you in the live chat. If you miss a live video, you can always come back and check it out anytime. All right, let's detail this a little bit closer here. And this is a live stream. So if I mess up, just please forgive me. I, sometimes I call, for example, Southwest PA, Southeast PA, just as I'm talking, I need to slow down and just think about what I'm saying. My brain outruns my mouth sometimes as we get talking about these things. We've got snow into the northeast. Okay, this is today. This is starting to move out. Cold Arctic air building in behind this. It's windy and chilly. We're seeing a pretty decent storm, too, here in the Pacific Northwest. And unfortunately, the fire hose is turned on again. A lot of Pacific moisture just slamming into British Columbia. Heavy snow into the mountains. More snow into the Canadian Rockies. Un Unbelievable start to ski season. Places like Sunshine Village, Lake Louise, Revelstoke. Now, I don't know that we're getting as much snow down towards, say, Whistler. A little bit, maybe too warm, but there's a lot of moisture around, and it's going to start to get colder. Unfortunately, it's the opposite once you cross down here into Washington and Oregon. It's been a lot warmer. Ski resorts struggling to even get open here. A huge difference, too, into the Northeast, where it has been really cold this year. Some places pushing 180 inches in the northeast. Pretty wild. And we're talking about mid-December already looking at that much snow. All right, let's continue to roll this out in time. We're now moving toward Wednesday. A couple of systems I think to take note of. Again, all of that moisture moving to the Pacific Northwest with the flooding we saw last week with all the moisture and the mudslides, that risk is going to be around. Even if we don't see as much rain, that's going to be a problem here. 
uh, into the northeast and, and also into eastern Canada. A little bit of light snow, but as this storm that's bringing the snow today that's starting to wrap up for New York along the eastern seaboard, this bad boy really gets cranking. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this looks like some heavy snow for, for Nova Scotia here into eastern Canada into the Maritimes. So big wind, big snow here with this. Again, as we look to the west, a weak system moves across Canada. Southern Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, warming up a little bit, maybe more like Saskatchewan and Manitoba, and even Ontario, some warm air with southwest flow out ahead of this low that's racing off to the east. This one's not diving in like a clipper into the U.S. The weather pattern has changed, and we're seeing a bit of a ridge here across the central and southern U.S. Colder conditions moving into the west. I think we watch this trough closely. If you're watching across central Canada, the northern U.S., this has been showing up the last couple of days towards the middle part of the week. My question is, how big of a snowmaker is this going to be? A couple of the models have been hinting that it could be interesting here. Right along the U.S.-Canadian border, Winnipeg, that would crush you with snow. Now this is going to continue to move to the east. Out ahead of this, some really warm air starts to move up from the southwest. We're not talking about blowtorch. Now don't get me wrong, it's going to be warm enough to rain all the way to Canada. but. We're talking about 30s and 40s still, not 60s and 70s. Behind this, rain to snow behind this in two parts of Michigan, Indiana, Ohio. And then look at this sucker really cranking up. That pulls the wind into the northwest, northeast again. After some rain, we go back to snow. And another system moving across Canada. This is what I'm talking about, just building that snowpack. And I think that's why this winter is different. If you look back at past winters, if I were to show you this map right here, there was a tremendous amount of red and orange across Canada. That's not the case this year. And that has implications, I think, across the U.S. too. Again, as that snow builds, more snow on the way, and uh, it's just favorable for the cold. Here's where the snow is going to fall over the next couple of days, some out west too. And again, those snow levels start to drop, so maybe we finally get some snow a little further south. But, I mean, even through next Saturday, not looking super favorable, we're trying to bring some snow in here, maybe into the Sierra. Gosh, we just keep pushing this out. And I think that's the sign of that pattern, that cold. I think the models are hitting on that idea how it's, it's just really messing with their performance. Let's look closer in. We'll go into your region too here today. At least I hope we do. Well, some snow into the Canadian Rockies. We've talked about that into British Columbia. Snow levels drop. Rain picks up into the Pacific Northwest. Some of that snow sliding east of the mountains into the Dakotas. But here we go with the big one, I think, on Wednesday. That puts heavier snow into Calgary. Uh, into a lot of Montana, eastern Montana, down into Wyoming. Some of the snow trying to get into the Wasatch, too, behind this system. And then again, right along the U.S.-Canadian border into North Dakota, into Minnesota, some heavy snow behind this system. And then we have another system moving into the northwest. Look where they're not going, though, right? <clears throat> We're not seeing the heavy precipitation into the southwest. Okay, we had a pretty decent storm into Flagstaff that dropped a lot of snow uh, a while back. Gosh, I think that was before Thanksgiving. Really, since then, we've not seen anything. And right now, I'm not so sure that there's a lot of confidence in anything even through Christmas. All right, I'm just going to put that out there. Maybe I'm wrong. Gosh, it's been warm in Boise. It's been warm in eastern Washington and Oregon, 50s and 60s for highs. Really mild for this time of year. Let's work our way east now. High pressure. And this is an, a polar Arctic high pressure sitting right over southern Indiana and southern Illinois as we head into tonight. It's going to be extremely cold here under this. To the west of it, though, we got southwest winds bringing in some warm air. So temperatures may actually rise through the night in some areas. And as we head into Monday, we stay relatively dry. Look at this quiet across the central U.S. In fact, beautiful. Maybe a few showers trying to break out as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. And we're talking about rain showers, possibly a little bit of mixed precip as that cold Arctic air is stubborn to leave the surface here across parts of Iowa, Minnesota. And then here comes our next impactful system. Again, Heading into Wednesday and Thursday, pulling that warm air all the way to the Great Lakes. You know, this looks colder today, colder than it has even the last couple of days. And then behind this, big winds and turning colder here into Missouri, down into Tennessee, Kentucky, even into Mississippi. We got another shot of cold air moving into the deep south. Here's a look at your temperatures today. Look at that. These are highs, probably not getting above zero. Cold day in Chicago. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, anything happening in the upper Midwest, in the Midwest is going to be chilly today into the Ohio Valley, Indiana, Illinois tonight, getting cold into tomorrow. Again, those temperatures starting to rise, though, across the central U.S. There's Monday, and then into Tuesday, we're pushing 50 up to Pierre, all the way into uh, the 60s 
down into parts of Oklahoma and Kansas, Denver, pushing into the 60s, getting into Wednesday, still pretty warm here, but here comes that next shot of cold air moving to the east, and look, I'm telling you what, there's a lot of cold air in Canada, and you can tap, if you tap into it, the models are pulling 20s below zero south again, into Montana, or I know it's Minnesota. There's going to be some cold air into Montana. I meant to say, I skipped you guys here, but it kind of moves east here, and then it dives into Minnesota, into Wisconsin, into the Great Lakes, and I think there's another one reloading behind this. It's interesting to see how these models are leading colder. It is snowing today into the northeast. You're getting your snow into New York, New Jersey, all the way up and down the east coast, the I-95 corridor. That settles down as we head into this evening. The snow goes away, and then we'll start to turn windy. We're windy now. It's going to stay windy. Winds out of the northwest, north-northwest at times. Lake effect snow going here. That will start to shut down some as some light snow moves in as our warmer air tries to move in from the southwest over top of that cold Arctic air. It's going to squeeze a few snow showers out as you get that layer of air starting to cause some up, upward vertical velocity. That's the key to get the precipitation, summer or winter, and you're going to get that. It's just a little bit of lift for some light snow moving here, and then high pressure builds into the south. This is going to bring some warm air on the backside of this north, and now we're heading into Wednesday and Thursday. Some showers across the south. That, that rain starts to expand, at least the chance of rain, pretty far to the north, into Michigan, up here where there's some snow on the ground. So we may melt some of that. And then here comes low pressure. Look at it. It's deepening as it gets towards the Great Lakes, continues to deepen, down to a 984 millibar low by the time you get into Friday morning here on the European. That creates some decent wind out ahead of this and behind it. So if anything, this thing is looking like one heck of a wind maker. As the front blows through, there you go. Rain to snow on the backside of this into the mountains. That Places like Pittsburgh, Erie, Cleveland, down to Charleston. I don't know. It'll take Charleston a little while to get cold. And I don't know that it would snow into Charleston with this type of setup. It's more like a mountain snow. And then lake effect picks up behind it with winds out of the northwest. And uh, we'll stop at this point. <laughs> There's a look at your temperatures today. Cold in the mountains of West Virginia, down into Virginia, into North Carolina, and into the south. These are your highs this afternoon, more than likely staying in the 20s in North Mississippi, North Alabama, Northern Georgia, in the Tennessee, very cold. Tonight, lows near zero or below zero across central Indiana, central Illinois, into Ohio, Cincinnati, probably getting very close to zero tonight. These are air temperatures. And, uh, you know, if you look at this, even down into the deep south, temperatures in the teens and very close to, to the teens here into the low country of South Carolina. And there's a lot of cold weather advisories out right now. And I want to show you something. This is uh, These are your actual temperatures. When you factor in the wind, let's be real. This is what it feels like today. Oh, my gosh. Even in the midday, it's only going to feel, at best, 10 to 15 below. And then tonight, that cold moves east. The wind is going to be mostly the strongest here as we get into the mountains, downwind of the mountains. So as we get into Monday morning, some decent wind chills into the Ohio Valley. I mean, Columbus waking up to feeling like 10 below, maybe 15 below at times. So... Cold air on the way, way below average for this time of year, above average across the West. That's been the setup this winter, and listen, maybe it, uh, maybe it starts to break down some. I know some of you out West, you're just hoping for the snow. Quite a bit of snow on the ground already. I do appreciate you guys. If you've joined the live stream, chiming in, Staten Island is five inches on the, on the ground right now. All right, let's go. Quite a bit of snow falling across the country uh, looks like we had in central Indiana about six inches of snow. So this was pretty interesting. Minnesota, six inches on the local lake of ice. Thanks for chiming in on the, in the, on the live chat. And if you're catch, catching this video later, let me know how much snow you got where you are. I always love reading your comments. And it's not always going to be right. These, uh, this is just forecast model. And this is analysis we only can do with what we get, right? Bad information in, bad information out to you. But... To me, it looks like this snow overperformed. Okay, last night, if you catch the live stream, I was talking about that. It was overperforming across the Midwest. Did a live stream last night saying, this thing may overperform in the Northeast as it gets towards New Jersey. We saw those winter storm warnings get pushed out too, right? Into parts of New Jersey. Very interesting. All right, that's all I got for this video. See you next time, guys. Have a great Sunday wherever you are. I'll see you next time.